Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. So just picture it, me, six in the morning, frying some eggs. You're gonna murder me. I, I will. If you've ever wanted to live this simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations, urban habitats. When buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. Oh. Secret dishwasher. Nice. Very important. That's tiny living. All right, can you grab some wine glasses? Woohoo! Party. Here, pass it down. Eric and Jason both grew up on Long Island and have deep roots here. So we're currently living in Amityville, Long Island. It's a cute little town, like the Amityville Horror. <sighs> Amityville is a suburb about 40 miles east of New York City. It's a picturesque town with just under 10,000 people. There are lots of vintage houses here, including the one that Eric and Jason call home. It's a 2,200 square foot, two bedroom, two bath, and reveals their quirky style perfectly. It's a house that's been in the family for years, and we took it over. And now I think we're just ready to live in the city. Jason and Eric were married four years ago. Jason's a graphic designer for kids' apparel. Eric's a concierge at a Manhattan hotel. But to many, he's also the fun-loving Prince Powderpoof. He's a, a royal dandy extraordinaire, and he's just a riot. <sighs> Eric and Jason both commute to Manhattan every day, and it's gotten to be a grind. During the week, it's like being on a hamster wheel. Go to work, go to the gym, come home, and do it all over again. So our lives are really in the city. So if we could just cut that commute out of our lives, it would just be amazing. But Jason's a painter, and his home studio in Amityville is just the way he wants it. So they plan to keep the Long Island place and get a tiny space in the city for the work week. So what kind of tiny space are they looking for? The kitchen's going to play a really big factor into where we have to live. I need counter space. I need a refrigerator. You know, everything that comes with a normal kitchen. I understand that. You know, cooking for you means eating for me, which is great for us. But your important kitchen is my important storage. I got a lot of stuff. They also haven't agreed on a neighborhood. Jason's looking for a quiet place in the city, but Jason's kind of like grandma, and I'm way cooler than grandma. So I like to be downtown, and he wants to be on the Upper East Side, maybe. They've set their budget at $500,000. Size-wise, they're looking in the 400-square-foot range. Eric made their first appointment at an ingeniously designed studio in Greenwich Village. This neighborhood may be the epicenter of Bohemian New York, but it's pricey. How much is this apartment? It's 650. And how big is it? 375 square feet. This is it? Yeah, right here. OK. Hi, guys. Hey. Jason. Hey. Eric. Hi. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. I'm Suchi. Come on in. Thank you. Welcome. Wow, this is a great apartment. It's all about the feeling. This is your coat closet. Uh, oh, my goodness. Which has tons of storage. I could have used this about 20 years ago to come out of. <laughs> The design was absolutely based on maximizing every single square inch. Here you are in the dining room. It's got a pretty big dining table that can seat six, maybe even eight. We do like to entertain, but this is a really big table, don't you think? Yeah, it kind of eats a lot of the floor space up. Well, there is a trick to this table. Oh? It goes up in the air. No. Yes, it does. Really? How? Yeah. These four pulleys, they uh -huh. drop down with a remote, and then each one of them connects to the corners of this table. And you press a button, and it goes up in the air. So it actually frees up all of this floor space. And you can make your grand entrance. You could. Or I could store you up there. Right. <laughs> or you could have a party. The fact that the table can go away, that's a great feature. Wow, look at all these built-ins. I think we have over 100 cabinets in the house. All of us as New Yorkers need storage space. The one thing everybody wants is more storage space. So this is Fifth Avenue here. And uh, notice that you're right on a major avenue, and you can hear nothing. Yeah, it seems pretty quiet. Because there's um, double-pane glass windows everywhere, so you don't hear the street at all. That is what I'm looking for. So as you can see, the living room's right here. Oh, great. Come it's on like in. a nice, spacious little room. You have a large couch. It's a huge sectional. You can hang out here with a lot of people. 
and directly across from the sofa, here's your television. Oh, wow. And on the other side, you have a bar. TV and liquor all in one. Nice. Sounds like a Saturday night. And look, more storage. Oh, nice. Just what we need, just what you need, I should say. And look at this. I have a little surprise for you. <gasps> These things open up as well. Oh, so wow. Coming from a house, I think the use of storage here will be amazing. Things that we'll need for during the week. Yeah, we won't see any of it. It'll all be hidden and tucked away. So let's head over to the kitchen. Wow. Nice countertop. I like the marble. It is quartzite, which is even much more durable than marble. Oh, look at that. Four burner stove. An oven? That's a convection oven and a microwave. Very, Very nice. high end. Nice. A dishwasher. Nice. I'm off duty. So when have you ever been on duty? And this is your refrigerator. Oh my goodness. Wow. Hidden refrigerator that's tiny. A uh, small sink. This place is Cabinet City. And you have storage here as well. Awesome. It might be small, but there is definitely space to work with. The kitchen's great. Just having a dishwasher is an amazing thing. I know all my friends who live in the city don't have a dishwasher. Is this the bedroom? That is. Talk about breakfast in bed. Uh... Is this the bedroom? That is. Your bed is separated from your kitchen by a couple of shades. Is it a full or a queen? This is a full. Jason and Eric are making their first real estate purchase of their married lives here in Manhattan. This Greenwich Village Studios showing them what 375 square feet feels like. And you can lift up the mattress. Now that's storage. Wow. Very cool. Oh, wow. You can store our in-laws in there. You could. And you've got three drawers under there. So just picture it, me, six in the morning, frying some eggs. And honey, is that bacon? Yeah. You're going to murder me. Uh, I will. Between the bed being so close to the kitchen, I don't know if it's really going to work for me. So that's just something to think about. Let me show you the bathroom, which is around the corner. It's a great little bathroom. Yeah, little but nice. Nice shower. Wow, I love a good stand-up shower. And definitely room for two. Uh, this is the shower, and this is the bedroom. And there's the kitchen. It's just all very close together. But, I mean, it's New York. I guess that's what we have to get used to. I was a little worried at first moving to the city that I might have to give up some stuff. But seeing this first apartment, I think there is a lot of storage that could be utilized. So I'm pretty happy with that aspect. Well, what'd you think? Overall, I really liked it. I mean, we're in the village. It's a really great location. And lots of storage, which I really like a lot. Yeah. But I'm just not quite sure about the kitchen, next to the bedroom, yeah, no. next to the bathroom. So for the next property, really like to see something, I guess, in a little bit of a quieter neighborhood and just closer to the budget that we are promised each other that we tried to stick to. The second space is 75 blocks uptown on the Lexington Avenue line on the Upper East Side. This area's got museums like the Met and the Guggenheim and borders on Central Park. Space two's a few blocks east of the museums in a quiet neighborhood called Yorkville. It's 390 square feet and is priced at $350,000, which is a juicy 150K under budget. You ready? Yeah, I can't wait. Let's go. It's a third floor walk up in a no doorman building. Hi. Hey. I'm Barbara. Hi, I'm Eric. Jason, nice to meet you. Come on in. Thank you. Oh, wow, I think this wow. person's got enough mirrors for you. I love it. I can see myself here. Perfect for you. I can see myself here. I can see myself over here. Hey. <laughs> the building was built in 1920. The current owners call the place the Victorian, which is a reflection of their decorating style. The apartment's being sold partly furnished. Let's start with the kitchen. Okay. Oh, your favorite. Some good counter space for, you know, like preparing stuff. I don't know what I use it for. I use it for a bar. Of course you would. The kitchen earlier was way more up to date. Look at this stuff. Ugh, looks like Betty Crocker's oven from 1902. Yeah. Actually, from the looks of it, I think it might be. Decent-sized sink. Nice-sized refrigerator. Yeah, definitely. Storage is OK, though. Nothing spectacular. All of these cabinets, these are great. There's more back here, look. OK, a toaster oven, microwave. Okay. The kitchen here is pretty average, but I think with the 150000 we save from the budget, we'll have uh, some money for some updates. Wow, this is nowhere near the bathroom that we saw earlier. That other one was a spa. It's bright, though, which is nice. A lot of storage in here, which is good. Awesome chandelier. That's a cool touch. Nice size shower. 
Yeah, but nothing like the one earlier. Yeah, but at least the shower's on this side of the apartment, so I could be showering and you could be sleeping. Right, and never hear the shower. Okay, well, this is definitely something that I need, the desk. But you know what I like from this apartment? It's like, there's the bathroom, there's the kitchen, here's the workspace, living space, and bedroom. Everything sort of definitely has their own carved out space in this apartment. This is like a, a bookcase storage unit. That trunk. Yeah, I can uh, maybe put some of my antique jewels and gems in there. But still, definitely not the same storage level as the apartment that we saw earlier. In the Victorian, we have a closet. A closet's a closet. We have a trunk. A trunk is a trunk. It's really nothing ingenious or innovative. It's just storage. Little living room. Big couch. And the TV makes great use of the space, because look, it's surrounded by storage. Yeah, with a huge couch over here and a huge TV, where's our dining room table going to be? Where are we going to eat dinner every night? This seems to be it. I mean, what are we going to do? Sit on our knees and eat like monks no, every look. night? No, Just sit at the couch like this and you eat. I mean, hunched over like that? That doesn't sound very fun. I mean, maybe I can sit over here, maybe? But still, I feel like I'm a little kid eating at a little table. The Victorian has no dining room table. And for me, that could be a downfall, because where are we going to eat our meals? Let's go over here and look at where the bedroom is. Eric and Jason are touring a tiny 390 square foot space in Manhattan's Yorkville neighborhood. It's a railroad style apartment, so it's got at least one long dimension to give the impression of space. Another key feature is this raised platform, which creates definition in the unit. I guess you're right. This bedroom is very much separated from the rest of the space. I like the light. It's nice looking over it on the street. But I mean, there's just no visual separation. We have friends over, and you're hanging out in the living room, and I want to be sleeping off my hangover from Saturday night over here. It's just one big free-for-all. That's true. Something to consider. But look at this amazing bed. I think it's like a queen-size bed. More storage over here. Look at this huge case. We're just not going to find an apartment that works for every situation. This is New York City. I think New York City is all about a compromise of space. All right, I mean, it sounds like we have a lot of differences about this apartment. Listen, I think for right now, we're going to agree to disagree. Barbara, thank you so much for showing this to us. We really appreciate it. Moving to the city, I'm all for living tiny. But at the same time, I'm not going to sacrifice on certain things. I think Marie Antoinette over here wants her cake and eat it, too. Well, you know, what I love about that one is it's 150000 under budget. I mean, you kind of can't go wrong there. And that leaves us with so much wiggle room to do whatever we want with the place. That kitchen was tiny. Do you think that's going to work? Listen, it wasn't the most up-to-date kitchen, but it's the chef who makes the kitchen, not the kitchen who makes the chef. That neighborhood is not ideal. It's still Manhattan. You're living in the city. It's just a little bit quieter. You're just a little bit away from it all. The next tiny space the guys will tour is back downtown at Gramercy Park. This is an easygoing neighborhood on the east side, and it's gotten trendy in recent years. The size of this newly renovated apartment is 390 square feet, and the price is $540,000. That's 40K over budget. Here we go, A. Hi, guys. Come on in. I'm Michael. Hey, Jason. Eric. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice space. Yeah, this is a great space. A whole new world. We call this the five to one apartment. I think everything in New York City is incredibly tiny. We never have enough space, we never have enough dimension. We're always trying to squeeze every last bit of function, every last bit of usability out of the spaces that we work in. We're standing right here in the kitchen. It's brand spanking new. We just finished construction. Nice. Why don't you have a look around? Nice counter space. Very nice, light, clean. There's a lot of storage space here. Oh. Ooh. Secret dishwasher. Nice. Dishwasher fun. Very important. The dishwasher being invisible is kind of a nice thing because it really reduces the amount of visual noise in a small space. Nice stainless oven. Wow, brand new. Oh, look, it comes with a pot. And tons of storage everywhere. Brand new fridge. Nice and tall, just like me. Just like you. Look at so. this whole wall of cabinets. I like how open it is here. It's not next to a bed or a shower or anything. It's like its own little separate space. So far, this kitchen is the best one that I've seen. The appliances are new. The dishwasher is great. So this is a pocket door. Nice space saver. Ah, oh, look at this marble. It's gorgeous. It's Carrara marble, all from Italy. Ooh. The marble is classic. It sort of works with the apartment and the age of the building, which is, you know, it's a building from the 20s. So we really just nice. tried to make it simple, clean, modern, and feel refreshing. 
It's definitely the nicest bathroom we've seen. I like it. Yeah, really cool. We tried to make the room as spa-like as possible. So there's linen storage over here, brand new vanity, and there are about 20 nozzles on the shower over there. Nice uh, soaking tub. Yeah, really nice big bathtub. Ooh, and a karaoke attachment, fun. I can sing in the shower. The bathroom in this apartment was incredible. It's very modern, uh, very spa-like and serene. I liked it a lot. Hey! So we have a dedicated dining area over here. This table's great. It's a nice proper dining space where we can sit, entertain friends. Yeah, it's the perfect size table. And look at that awesome window that it's near. It's beautiful. This is the living room. Brand new sofa, fun pillows. Yeah, it's a pretty um, decent sized couch. And there's a great big TV right in front of you. So do you feel like the TV wall is a little far from the couch? No, Grandpa. I can see it perfectly fine. All of the wiring and equipment, it's all hidden away. Everything is by remote. Mm -hmm. And then also all of the lighting in the room is kind of hidden away from you. This is the home office space. Yeah, this is great. I definitely need a home office, yeah. Yeah, and look, there's a bar. Oh, that's my favorite. It's like work, and then you go right out for happy hour. That's right. And actually, these doors slide, so you can hide the whole office setup. And you can oh, see nice. here, it reveals your clothing closet. Closet's my favorite. From what I can see, it's a really deep closet, lots of different drawers. So the only thing I haven't seen yet is a bed. Where do we sleep? And I'll show you where the magic happens. Ooh, magic, I love it. Where do we sleep? I've got an app on my phone. This wall is actually motorized. And when I push this button, you're going to see that it's going to start to move. Very cool. That is incredible. Jason and Eric are touring a highly tricked out 390 square foot space in Gramercy Park in Manhattan. It's all powered independently. It can be operated manually or automatically. The technology is already in place for us to be able to do these things relatively easily. Nice. It's like a whole other room in the, yeah. in the apartment. So we call this the dressing room. Ah, my dream come true. My nightmare. You can slide this door to close off the closet. And then, of course, the television comes oh, wow. back around. Oh, wow. That nice. is incredible. Look at that. I like the fact that the TV moves back and forth. So if you want to watch TV from the living room, it's one option. From the bedroom, it's another option. Just don't move that wall while I'm on my workspace. I can run you over with whatever I want. The bed comes straight down this way. It's a German. Murphy bed mechanism, so the feet come down automatically. After a long day, I don't want to come home and have to decide what configuration my apartment's going to be. You know, I didn't marry a transformer. So now you've seen all five spaces, the dining room, the living room, the home office, the dressing room, and the bedroom. We call this the five to one apartment. It's an amazing use of space. I really like it. Yeah, it's just it's really amazing. I just don't know how practical it is for the two of us, but I think that that's something that we need to discuss. I think my main problem with this place is that the the rooms, yeah, they become different rooms, but they really can coexist at the same time. But uh, when it comes down to it, it's all about compromise, and that's what makes a relationship work. Jason and Eric have seen three plausible spaces. A studio in Greenwich Village, a Victorian-inspired walk-up in Yorkville, and a tricked-out five-to-one in Gramercy. Just to narrow it down, if you had to pick one to take out of the equation, what should it be? I think that one's really easy for me. I think I would just not take the studio. That setup was just not good for two people. Yeah, that layout was horrible. The kitchen next to the bed. Space one is a sleek, modern, 375 square foot Greenwich Village studio. At $650,000, it's $150,000 over budget, and the floor plan is challenging for two. There's two left. Which one do you think that you like better? Hands down, I would go with the five to one. Space three is a tricked out 390 square foot apartment in Gramercy Park with a price tag of $540,000. It's a great example of modern urban tiny with transformative design features. It basically it's five different rooms in one apartment. It had an amazing kitchen, which I know you love, amazing storage, which I love. You might have me on the kitchen, but I think I'd go with the Victorian, and I think that's a really easy decision for me. Space two is a funkier 390 square feet and comes in at $350,000. It's not as modern a space as the others, but it's got a flexible layout. We're going to be $150,000 under budget. We can remodel the kitchen a little bit. I like Gramercy better. It's further downtown, which is great, near all the action. Listen, at the end of the day, that is $150,000 saved for you to continue on and create your Prince Powder Proof character. Do you want to be over the top or over budget? <sighs> well, when you put it like that, I'd rather be over the top. I think we should go with the Victorian. Yeah, you really think you could do it? To be over the top, I'll have to make that sacrifice. I love you. Love you too, honey. Jason and Eric buy the Victorian on the Upper East Side for $350,000. Two months later, they're all moved in. 
Living in the city has been great. The commute to work is easy. The kitchen wound up being great. Where's the cutting board? In the oven. They still plan to upgrade the kitchen, but want to get to know the space first. Well, this could be my overcoat for tonight. And then maybe this underneath? What do you think? That's great. Living Tiny isn't that big of a challenge anymore. Jason can be on his computer with his headphones doing his work. I can be on the couch, you know, watching a movie or creating my new costume. So far, the Upper East Side's been OK. It's clean, it's quiet, it's nice. It's uh, definitely further from the downtown vibe, which I wanted. But I think in the end, it's going to be OK. Neighbors. And it's nice to be able to go out to the clubs with their friends and not have to worry about missing the train. Yo, powder poof, where are you? Are my royal subjects calling me? Hey. Hello, everybody. Powderproof uh, is here. You look amazing. Thanks, girl. I love it. This Powderproof is still his same grand self. We definitely had to downsize him for New York City. So, baby steps, but I think we'll get here. He's making it work. Here's the tiny living in New York City yes. to good friends Woo. and lots of glitter. Huge yes. personality. Lots of glitter. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. You look ready. Thanks. I love you. I love you, too. Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. I also ask you to look at the ceiling height. We have 14-foot ceilings in a mini apartment. Wow. If you've ever wanted to live this simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations urban habitats. When buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. An open wide studio becomes a one bedroom. That is awesome. That's tiny living. Jacqueline and David's romance seems like it was pulled from a movie plot set in the Big Apple. We met on the L train. I was like super psyched. Like, oh, I met this girl. Years later, they married under the Brooklyn Bridge, gave birth to their son, Finn, and baby number two was due in a few months. Let's go sit down and have some pizza lunch. Yeah. Currently, we're living in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, in a 1,200 square foot loft. And I just felt like, you know, a lot of our money is going to our mortgage. So we decided to sell. A little hot, you want to blow? Good job. You know, day in and day out, I think Jacqueline and I were really evaluating the things that are important to us. Less is more, and having a ton of stuff and having a kind of a vessel for all that stuff was relatively low on the list. And buying a tiny two-bedroom can be a cheaper survival tactic for raising a family in one of the world's most expensive real estate markets. Real estate is oftentimes $1,000 plus per square foot. So if you're talking about 600 versus 1,000 square feet, that's $400,000, you know? Professionally, David writes and gives talks about lifestyle and architecture. These units are actually 173 square feet. And although Jacqueline's an illustrator, she's also a licensed real estate salesperson. There was a property the other day that kind of meets that standard. New York City is different than the universal real estate market. They are not building any more land. This is what you get. You want it, you got to be willing to jump. The center of New York City's five boroughs is Manhattan Island, and Jacqueline and David would love to raise Finn and baby number two amongst the culture, great parks, and daycare options it offers. So to start the hunt, they hail a taxi and leave their outer borough home of Brooklyn. So I think we got our parameters pretty clear. Budget, 600, yeah. 600 gram. It sounds like, and it is a lot of money, but because we have chosen to live in New York, like. It doesn't get you very far. So what are we seeing first? The asking price is 965. <laughs> okay, it is steep. Jacqueline's a pro and knows that this might be the price to pay to live in the heart of the action. An apartment designed by the space's architect and current owner, Robert Garneau, has been on her radar, and it's in Manhattan's Art District of Chelsea, with many cafes and parks for Finn to play in. Practicing architecture in New York is really exciting because you've got a lot of constraints. So space is very limited. They're not cheap, but you can really make a big impact and get you know, basically the biggest bang for your buck. Hi. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Jacqueline. Nice Hi, to Jacqueline. meet you. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Okay. This is the Transformer Loft. Wow. Woo. 
This space here that we're in right now is the transformer loft. We called it that because we transformed essentially a pre-war dilapidated space. We came in, transformed it completely from the point of view of what it was before and what it is now. So over here you got the kitchen, everything is kind of hidden away out of sight and you don't need it. The kitchen used to be an enclosed space. We've opened it up. So being a cook, David, what do you think about the amount of counter space? It would be nice if there was a counter yeah, it's, here. I mean, this is a little too low for prep space. It's going to yeah, come back, It would back, be nice basically. if there was like a higher counter here, especially given your height. You well, know, like. there's more than meets the eye on this table. It actually goes up and down, if you can believe it. This yes, is one out. of those fun <laughs> tricks. <laughs> I can believe anything at this point. Oh so you press a button. Oh, my God, you're kidding me. It goes up. And then, believe it or not, there's storage inside this table. So the reason it's thick like this is that there's these drawers. Oh, so you wow. can keep all your oh, wow. stuff for the home office. Yep, there's another drawer there, a very big one. Wow. It opens pretty wow. far. This property is obviously above the budget that we're looking to spend. However, it is very clear where the money has gone into the space. Each and every inch has been utilized to the max. The one thing that may not be obvious as well is that these sofas kind of move around on wheels and you can make it into a queen size bed. Does the 965 include the furniture? <laughs> uh, it, uh, it doesn't right now, but you know, we can negotiate that. This is definitely custom design, so it would make a lot of sense to use it in the space. And yeah, well, <laughs> I, I like it with the furniture. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous, it's totally well considered, but you know, it, it, it's definitely a daunting proposition. Is this the only bed in the space? Would you like another bed? Yes. <laughs> so it just comes down out the wall. You pull on here, and then the feet come down automatically, which is a nice yeah. detail. Cool. It's good hardware for sure. If we didn't have to have two bedrooms, I would say that it worked. But since we don't plan on having the kids sleep in the room with us, a family of four might be a little bit of a stretch. So over here you have the dressing area. So really, what's between the bedroom and the washroom is cabinetry. It's great. Step into the bathroom. Wow, this is nice. But we also have some storage over here. So this is when things start oh, getting wow. interesting, you know? That's... Talking about storage, <laughs> this thing That's opens great. up, there's more, oh my God. more. And it gets even better when you turn around over here, you've got a whole wall, you touch it, everything starts to open, you know? Wow. You get linens in there. And then the kind of piece de resistance is these laundry hampers. You wow. guys, are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. He has taken it to a whole new level. This is like the bathroom. <laughs> but it is more than 50% more than we're looking to spend. It's a concern. And then these doors, door to ceiling, open up. Wow. Full height, everything in walnut again. Architect Robert Garneau is showing Jacqueline oh, and David wow. an ultra-customized awesome. apartment in central Manhattan. And although this part of the city is where they want to raise their kids... Ready for your brother? They have yet to see how this open studio provides privacy for the parents. Let me show you the rest of the apartment again. Going back to the living room, the piece de resistance is really this wall right here. So you might have thought the whole time this was a wall, which is fixed, uh -huh. but it actually moves. So what's currently an open wide studio becomes a one bedroom when you slide the wall. Wow. Become a one wow. bedroom. That is amazing. <laughs> Giving you that privacy that we were talking about. That's great. Acoustically, visually. On the side that faces the living room, it's painted white like everything else. On the back side and the bed side, it's wood. It's all walnut. So the experience of the space in the bedroom is very intimate. And then the added benefit, of course, is you've got all this storage now that you can use and occupy very easily. There's even more storage back in here, long-term storage, wow. suitcases. Wow. Having seen this property really gives me a sense that a bit of investment can go a long way into making it function like a larger space. The sliding wall may make it possible to fit a family of four in here, but it's still way over budget. I thought it was great. It was beautiful, gorgeous, but it was $365,000 more than our budget. So like, what the hell are we gonna do with that? As a real estate agent in pricey New York, Jacqueline knows a turnkey two bedroom apartment in Manhattan is a long shot given their $600,000 budget. So they might have to look elsewhere. I found a real gem. It's under our budget. That's good. 
It's in Brooklyn. It might need a little work. I, you know, I only saw it on pictures, but we'll we'll see what happens when we get up there. Ooh, that sounds ominous. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving their preferred area of Manhattan, they grab a cab over the East River and head down to Brooklyn's hip parent mecca of Park Slope. It's a little quieter and has a very family, you know, town kind of vibe, which I think is a definite plus. Yeah, I mean, there's some pretty family-friendly places in, in the city, too. You know, I've lived both in Brooklyn and Manhattan. And, you know, it's, it's New York City. We're still in the five boroughs, but if you're, you know, comparing Manhattan and Brooklyn, when you walk out in Manhattan, you're just kind of in the thick of it. And Brooklyn is a bit more subdued. Jacqueline wonders if buying a single occupancy fixer-upper right across the street from kid-friendly Prospect Park could work out by turning it into an amazing tiny space. Here we are, very, very different. <laughs> Definitely pre-war. Living room. Cool. That's a good size living room. Yeah. Beautiful inlay floors. Mm -hmm. um, however, they really show their wear and tear. It's kind of creaky. You can hear it. But if they really want to fit their entire family in here, they'll have to do a lot more than fix a creaky floor. They need to carve out two bedrooms and create more storage space. Let's see what we got. We got a closet here, kind of small. I wonder if this closet can be expanded. It looks like there's electric. Here. Pretty tough to take out a wall with electric, though, isn't it? Uh, probably, but if we're considering a, a full renovation, you might as well do it all the way, right? Instead of halfway. Uh, I guess. I mean, seems moving ready to me. Has oh, everything you could possibly <laughs> want: a tub, a toilet, sink. Where's the hamper behind this wall? Anyway? It's like what? <laughs> uh, Six hundred thousand dollars less than Robert's place. I mean, what do you what do you expect? <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Oh, look, this will make you happy. It looks like a brand new renovated kitchen. Plenty of counter space. Plenty of counter space. Looks like all new appliances, mm -hmm. more burner stove, which is totally fine. fine. The only thing is, you know, an open layout kitchen in such a small space would really give a lot of light, a lot of room. If we could knock this wall out here and overlook the windows in the living room. Yeah, I mean, nicer it's just you know a money uh -huh. and then b i see time like like that's a lot of you know that's it's going to take a lot of our bandwidth and where we're at with our lives one small kid and another you know kid on the way like i'm not super psyched about that proposition but why don't we check out the rest of the space okay let's see what else we got imagine if this was more open you know kind of like in robert's apartment how it had that expansiveness. I think the beauty of me and David is that we are opposites. He's the relaxed guy. I'm the let's do it, come on, let's go, you know, jump in head first. So what you're saying here is this is a gut job. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's kind of what I was afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> in trying to find a cheaper place to their preferred area of Manhattan, Jacqueline found a fixer-upper in the family-friendly area of Park Slope, Brooklyn. But with their second baby due in a few months, starting a major renovation project in order to create two bedrooms where there's only one is the last thing David wants to do. I know what goes into a renovation, and it, and it, and it takes you know it takes a lot of work. Is this another closet or? Oh, huh. <laughs> Okay, it's goes a, to the kitchen. <laughs> perfect. I mean, this should just be a wall. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I, I, I get it, but it's it's a lot to take in. This idea of ripping it to the to the to the studs. Okay, okay. It was a little bit more than um, I bargained for in terms of superficial changes. The one thing I would like to know is if there's something out there that was a little bit more ready to rock, you know, uh -huh. and that was within our budget. For her husband's sake, Jacqueline digs deep into her real estate contacts and finds an amazing surprise. Not only is it right on budget, it's where they originally wanted to raise their kids. I know that he'll be psyched when we get there, so. <laughs> so she whisks David down into the subway and they zip back to Manhattan. So what are we looking at now? Uh, we are on the Upper West Side. Great uh, neighborhood. Two blocks from Central Park. Perfect for the boys. Jacqueline's arranged a showing with architect Scott Speck. His company tackled a $400,000 rehab of a vertical quad-level space where the final results have to be seen to be believed. I've been working in tiny houses for 15 years at least, and this was an opportunity to do it in one of the biggest cities in the world. It's turnkey as far as I know, and I think it's worth it to check it out. Sounds like it checks all the boxes. 
Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, nice good to, to meet, meet you. you. Scott. Likewise. This is my husband, David. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for taking time today to show us the space. Oh, I'm glad to. Yeah. Wow. It's very unusual to have a space that's 25 or 28 feet tall in New York. When we first saw the place, it was pretty horrifying. The uh, brick walls were left unpainted and had a lot of debris on them. There was a basketball hoop hanging in here. So it was a pretty uh, pretty mortifying place. Mind if we fabulous. poke around a little bit? Please. Pull. Gummy panel. There oh, you go. So it's got a little go. pull-out nice. Yeah, that's great. And the panels are all made of uh, catalyzed lacquer surface, so incredibly durable. Wow. You can beat up on them with a hammer, and they're not going to uh, you, oh. get marred. You know our son, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And then underneath the stair, take a look, please. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. You've got a really slim sink here to kind of minimize the footprint. Um, I see there's no bathtub, though. No bathtub. You know, it'd be nice to have a tub for the kids, but uh, in a few years, you know, they get accustomed to taking showers on us and into the living room. I'm absolutely in love with the texture of the brick. And, and I also ask you to look at the ceiling height. The 14 foot ceilings in a mini apartment. Wow. It's Really cool. Oh, wow. The whole under stair storage idea is from a Japanese idea called Kaidan Dansu, mm -hmm. and where they used to build oh, stairs wow. with storage. It's Brilliant. usually a, a dead space underneath the stair, yeah, so no, it's used it's for everything. Really, yeah. It's really impressive. And what's amazing about it is it's already here. You know, like we don't have to do that that thinking in our construction ourselves. It's, it's like a hotel almost. Uh, ready to go. So um, what's going on up here? So this leads up to level three, okay. uh, main bedroom area. I wonder how Finn will do on these uh, stairs, <laughs> but <laughs> that we could talk about later. Yeah. The light in here is just incredible. Yeah. And if you hit that switch, there are automatic blinds that come down so that you can control the amount of light that comes in. I was there's wondering cool. about There's one that. over the door as well. And this was a real technical challenge. This bed is cantilevered on big steel beams out over wow. the living room. So we were allowed to open up the bottom space with no columns, but still allow the bed to hang over. We had giant steel beams, four of them, brought up here by crane through the window and anchored into the wall behind. Those are hidden within the bed and holding it up, and it floats over the living room. I'm not going to lie. As we're walking around the apartment, I'm kind of like, where do the kids sleep? I mean, we would definitely have to consider safety, right? So we have edges here and ledges. What's coming up for me is that with two children, I just, the sense of privacy, there not being a true door to close, that might be problematic down the line. This vertical marvel of an apartment presents a few safety concerns for David and Jacqueline's son, Finn but ingenious design features like Ken levering the bed out over the living room give Tiny Wow Factor a new name. The couple that lived here prior did have a child, and it, it seemed to work fine for them. It's possible. We just would need to outfit it. We need a Murphy bed. We need something to tuck away. You haven't seen it all yet. There's another level up oh. to the outdoor space. Outdoor space in New York City is a complete luxury because it's so rare. And uh, to have a tiny apartment that has an outdoor space is even more rare. It, it's unheard of. <laughs> it's amazing that this is a smaller square footage, but it has such a sense of largeness. At 425 square feet, it feels certainly as big as the others or maybe bigger. It's, a, it's an illusion. Maybe that's the biggest trick out of, <laughs> out of all of the apartments. And what's, what's, what's so great about this place is that everything has been thought through ahead of time, and I feel like I could just show up here with a bag and, and move right in. In terms of what we're actually, you know, what we end up doing, whether we're gonna, you know, do a turnkey or whether we're gonna do a gut renovation, we have to talk it out. One of us is gonna have to give a little. Space One is an enticing prospect. Right in their target area of central Manhattan, its awesome customizations make the tiny space work for the family. But all those tiny thrills, make for one big problem. We're coming in at such a high price tag. Space Two took them on a detour to Brooklyn, where things are more affordable, but it's farther from Manhattan's action, and David's reluctant to take on a major renovation project. We have a baby coming, <laughs> you know, like soon. Space Three seems to have it all. It's on budget and right near Central Park in Upper Manhattan. And unlike the Brooklyn property, it only needs some minor customizations to fit their entire family. I mean, I think that there's a way that we can make it work. If you were to eliminate a space, the Chelsea one would make the most sense. The price tag is just too high, yeah, no matter I mean, down to <laughs> renovating two. versus moving ready. Yeah, I mean, for me, the choice is the Upper West Side. 
but we're gonna have to find a way to create separation for the kids. So I'm in the Park Slope camp. I'm leaning towards the renovation. It'll allot us each our respective spaces. I guess, I mean, I'll, I'll just say it. I'm like, I'm afraid. We've got renovations, could be Pandora's boxes. I feel like the long-term benefits way outweighs the three or four months of craziness that can happen. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's let's do it. Let's let's go for Park Slope. Really? <laughs> really. I, I, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I, I know. I you're gonna you're gonna you're this gonna is... kill it, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. After choosing the tiny fixer-upper next to Prospect Park, Jacqueline is able to close the deal for four hundred thirty thousand right, dollars. And with her baby due in just a few months. No time is wasted stripping the place down to the studs and rearranging some walls. In the end, a new galley kitchen flows into the main living space, as do two new bedrooms, one of which, the master bedroom, can be closed off from the living area with a sliding door. So the renovation came in between 160 and 165. We found an excellent contractor, and I was always two steps ahead. It was a stressful period, you know? Like, we had to hustle and, like, get it in, in, in time for the baby, but we did it. Oh, thank you for that kiss. You're so generous. We took down all the walls, and we rebuilt them. So Finn's room and baby to come has the largest room. Bye. Bye. We put Murphy beds in Finn's room and in our room. When they stow away, the feeling of the room is really expansive. But when you close the door, you have complete privacy. Shadow box? Me, me. We made a floor to ceiling storage because there's not a lot of room in here for furniture. We also moved the wall in the kitchen so that we can have a galley. We see a window from every corner of every room, which really creates a sense of expansion. One thing that should be noted is with a smaller space, there's less material, you know? So it was a little easier to justify getting marble countertops, for example, you know, because there's fewer square feet to, to cover. And um, I've actually been uplifted by it. While it, it took a bit to get here, I, I think it was worth it. We're talking about vacations. We're talking about spending more t time off in the summer. I feel like everything in my life counts. Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. Great stone floors, a ton of woodwork, and a gigantic cat table. Yes. If you've ever wanted to live the simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed wilderness locations, urban habitats. When buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. More storage. Oh, these open up? Whoa. Fantastic. That's tiny living. Yep, I think it's, uh, it's a bit too big. Thing. Anna and Eric are pretty typical 20-something <laughs> Seattle dwellers. But something separates these two from the hipster pack. I am definitely introverted, to say the least. I do have friends who ask me if Eric ever smiles. So I end up being the spokesperson for us. I think he appreciates the service. Anna's an American who was born and raised in Europe. Eric's from Colorado, but often spent his childhood summers with his grandparents in Japan. They met in Denver four years ago, but now call Seattle home. Want to give it a smile? Yeah, let's give it a smile. Anna and Eric use charts to help make decisions, like where to go on vacation. I'm going to circle it. OK. OK. All right, let's go to Victoria. Sweet. Anna works as a copywriter, and Eric's a web developer but both have extracurricular passions. Starting to become clear. I play guitar, bass, drums, piano, a little bit of violin, melodica, that kind of thing. So I love reading, so I have about a thousand books. It'd be great if we could find a home for all of them. And I also am passionate about making things. Anna's a woodworker who makes everything from furniture to spoons, but she'd love to trick out a tiny home. 
Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Anna and Eric are currently in a 600 square foot, one bedroom, one bath apartment. And finding dedicated space for their hobbies is tough. They want to get off the rent treadmill and have been talking about going tiny for over a year. Even their friends are in on the plan. We really want to be near water, nature, trees, that kind of thing, but still close to town. OK, so like somewhere you can hike easy but still have parking? Yeah. yeah. OK. <laughs> it would be amazing if we could be near water. That's going to be tough. Yeah. Anna and Eric have found a realtor who knows Seattle well. We've got water all around us. Great little neighborhoods, culture, nightlife, and we're a 30-minute drive to a mountain. How does Jennings rate Anna and Eric's odds? Tiny home, space for hobbies in Seattle with a feeling of nature. Uh, we'll have a few good choices, but the keyword is few. Anna and Eric are targeting tiny homes in the 450 square foot range and have set their budget at $250,000. All right, guys, I call this one the cottage, and it's definitely got the nature that you're looking for. The cottage sits in a quiet neighborhood called Holler Lake and is just eight miles north of downtown Seattle, a tiny house on a tiny lake. Surrounded by huge trees. You've got the water right here. It spent a lot of time out there. So close. This house comes in a little bit under budget at $225,000. I like that. And. It's a little bit smaller than what you were looking for. It comes in at 350 square feet. All right, let's, let's see. Whoa. Yeah. Great stone floors, a ton of woodwork, and a working fireplace. And a gigantic cat table. Yes. A little scary. Does it come with the place? It does. The house is fully furnished. Wow. Instead of bringing, like, mice, it'll bring full rabbits for us to cook. <laughs> exactly. I think the space in the living room is, is actually pretty ample. I could definitely imagine working, uh, even playing a little bit of music. I don't know. I like to be inspired by a place when I walk into it to be able to make changes. This looks pretty locked in style-wise. I think that this house is great, but does have a very distinctive style. It does feel a little historic, which could be interesting. I'm wondering, where am I going to put my tools and your, all your instruments? Yeah. Internally, you're not going to find a lot of space for your hobbies. OK. But you've got a lot of exterior space. If you wanted to build something. Even if we couldn't build anything, we could like rent a studio space or something with the extra money. That's true. Speaking of tiny, here's our wee kitchen. I don't see an oven. Do you see an oven anywhere? The sellers have got a microwave here, but you could definitely fit one of those convection ovens there. OK, so mini pies instead of regular nice. spinach pie. Yeah. Yeah. OK, this is the only burner? Yes, okay. correct. This is kind the of The wood's cool. That's really nice. Yeah, they did a lot of really fine Kind woodwork. of matches the beams and. So this goes just straight into the bathroom here? Squeeze on in. Just a little guy. Yeah. Very small. OK. This toilet's kind of no, cool. That's an interesting feature. Give that a flush, see what happens. Flush the toilet? Yeah. OK. Whoa. Is that filling the tank? Yeah, that fills the tank. It's awesome to use the water twice, but it seems weird to have two sinks. I don't know, uh, that one's yours. <laughs> you can... I don't know if I want that your one. Your sink, my sink? I don't think I want the toilet water. I am not a big fan of that sink, especially if I'm relegated to it. <laughs> Still going. Yeah. Could be long enough to brush your teeth. <laughs> More great woodwork here and a really, really wide staircase for a tiny house. Extra space for guests to sit. Yeah, I guess Replace so. the couch. Whoa. Whoa. Get a lot more light up here than downstairs. Wow. Definitely feels bigger. Eric and Anna work in downtown Seattle, but want to live in a tiny home surrounded by nature without a long commute. They're in the middle of touring a log cabin that might actually do all that. You've got storage options. There's a cubby area here. I kind of like how the wood here contrasts with the log cabin feel of everything else. Nice and modern. Clean. Definitely sharper up here, yeah. I feel super relaxed up here. This is where I want to, like, retreat. <laughs> nice. Shall I, shall I leave you to it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just love the view. All you can see, water, trees, and sky. If you guys think this looks good from up here, let's go outside and check it out. Take a peek at this lake. Love it. We've got gorgeous big trees, and you can head right out to the dock. Wow. 
Yeah, you said close to nature. No kidding. <laughs> I was not joking. Yeah. I was not joking. I think this would be my living room. I'll just put the couch on casters and bring it out here. We love taking walks in parks and that kind of thing. And if we have it available to us right outside our own door, um, all the better. So now that you guys have seen the place, what do you think? It's great. It comes in under budget. Yes. Uh, and I really love the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Stay up there all day. But we couldn't be able to fit our, our hobbies in there, I don't think. Yeah. Um, so I think if we could look at a place that has a little bit more room, not huge, but a little more space for those things. Absolutely. I've got a place in mind. Anna and Eric are finding out that in the world of tiny house hunting, perfection is rare. It was like being in a, a log cabin. I don't know if I want that. The bedroom was peaceful, but I'd say the kitchen would be a little stressful. One burner for everything. I mean, we couldn't even, you know, make tea and scrambled eggs at the same time. If we could just take that bedroom and plunk it onto a house with a bigger kitchen, I think I'd be happy there. Yeah. Jenny's next pick is just east of downtown Seattle in a neighborhood called Leshy, right on the shore of Lake Washington. This area feels more urban, but has some tiny gems hidden among the larger homes. This next property we're going to look at, I call the abode. Now, as you can see, this house is a little bit bigger. It comes in at 620 square feet. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Sounds like space for hobbies to me. But it does come at a price. This home is listed at $300,000. Oh, wow. Wow. I don't know if we can afford that. I hope we don't like it. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't hate it. Full stove, four burners. Full oven, could definitely cook for people in here. There's so much space for plates, dishes. Mm -hmm. Huge cabinets. Oh, yeah. Got a breakfast nook here, it looks like. Yeah. Ooh. More storage. Oh, these open up? Whoa. Fantastic. Tiny home, lots of storage. Mm -hmm. Seems like a win. We do try to cook pretty much every meal at home during the week, so it's important to have a very functional kitchen. A lot of room for our kitchen stuff. Now, here's the one bathroom, right over here. OK. There's this weird little nook over here. What do you got? Is this some oh. storage? There's like a whole shelf. It's tiny, but there's even more storage. Got a full tub here. Simple, easy to clean. Yeah, I mean, it's like every bathroom I've had growing up. We got one sink, though. Is that going to be a problem for you when I'm hogging the sink? I think we can share. OK. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, guys, so check out this awesome living room. Whoa. And for you, bookshelves. Bookshelves. Floor to ceiling, my goodness. Might even have to get more books to fill this shelf. <laughs> I don't want to have to move all those, though. <laughs> Anna's eyes just lit up when she looked at the bookshelves. So I love to buy and keep books, which I know is not terribly common these days. But the actual physical books, I get a lot of joy out of turning the pages. You know, so I noticed the kitchen was, like, totally empty, and there's, like, a little bit of furniture in here. It's kind of sparse. Is this it? Yeah. It comes as is. So what you see here is going to stay with the home. OK. So we're going to have to yeah, like, find more furniture, spend more money. And we're already 50000 over on this one. Can we make that happen? I don't know. I'm a little bit worried that if we do spend the extra $50,000 that we're going to end up, you know, in an empty house that we absolutely love with no ability to actually go out to dinner or go see a movie or anything like that. Let's take a look at the bedroom. Sounds good. All right. Got a pocket door here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Good that. use of space. OK. Pretty much the whole room is the bed. I mean, so. Yeah, could we even move this? Like, I don't know. It's That's like the only place it looks like it would fit. Yeah. I feel a little cramped in the bedroom. I think that it's kind of just a square with a bed in it. So it's kind of a big downside for me. See that bonus room? Yeah. This is the porch area that used wow. to be exterior that's turned indoor. So this is actually the old exterior of the house. Oh, wow. Tiny home seekers Anna and Eric are checking out a 620 square foot vintage house called The Abode, just east of downtown Seattle. They want their home to be a refuge from the noise and confusion of the city, ideally in a natural setting. Wow. There you go. This would be great in the summer. Keep them open. Mm -hmm. How far away is the lake? That lake there is one block away. So it's not in your backyard like it was at the cottage, but it's still within view. And then there's a hiking trail and a nature preserve over that way about a block and a half. 
That porch out there is probably where we're getting the extra space and the extra price. But if it's where we can do our hobbies, we can play music, maybe do some woodworking as well. It seems like it'd be worth it. So now that you guys have seen the place, what do you think? I really like it. We have a full kitchen that I know that we could entertain in and cook in. But you know, when we were looking for something in nature, we were really wanting to like be in there. We wanted to be a retreat from our work in the city. And I don't know about it being like a block away. I don't think that's gonna work for us. I'm really torn. I love the space. We have plenty of space for our hobbies, but you know, it's not coming cheap. The abode has added another dimension to the hunt and a point of disagreement between Eric and Anna. I know when you pull out the calculator and you punch in the numbers, it is coming in over budget, but I am so excited about the thought of doing our hobbies year round on that porch with the windows. I don't know. Woodworking. 50,000 bucks? That's like, we could get a really awesome studio space like right downtown where we work. 50,000 bucks, we could get rid of this junker car and buy a brand new car, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, that's true. The junker is now headed due north to an area called Lake City, where Jennings has found a promising tiny retreat. So we call this home the Oasis. I can see why. Yeah, and it comes in right on budget at $250,000. And I know that's right. important Perfect. to you. Yeah. It's got a really nice connection to nature. It feels almost like a tree house. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger than what you wanted, and it is 500 square feet. On budget and 50 square feet over what we wanted, that's awesome. There are two ways to get in, but we'll enter this door, which leads us right into the bedroom. OK. It's kind of weird. I like it, though. Yeah? Kind of got the entryway kind of marked off by tile. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, the style just immediately is like, bam. Orange walls, bright. I've always felt a little bit more modern. OK. And this is, this is kind of doing it for me. What is going on here? Yeah, what is that? This a map. Check it out. Whoa. They are using a map as a shade. Oh, cool. Yeah. What a great idea. And then check this out. What's going on? Whoa, that's what? on a lift. Yeah. Cool. It's There's really cool. so much space under there. Could fit a guitar or two under there. Yeah, maybe some books. I mean, I could even sleep under there. <laughs> watch, watch yourself. You might have to. And there's a full-size closet if you want to check it out. Cool. That's unusual for a tiny home. Yeah. Stack laundry, perfect. Yeah, good use of space. Bathroom. Yeah. Very modern, quite new. Yeah. No tub, but that, I mean, we kind of expect that in a tiny house. Got kind of a shower pod here. I guess it'll be all right. That's all right. Is, is this a towel warmer? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's heated. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Let's check out the living space in the kitchen. OK. OK. First thing you see, kitchen and windows everywhere. Oh, wow. Huge, full-size appliances for a tiny house. Tons of cupboard space. Mm -hmm. Dishwasher? I'm not going to have to wash any dishes. I've already got a dishwasher. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You see these windows back here? It just leaks out right into trees everywhere. It's really being surrounded in nature like we were trying to get. The kitchen is beautifully lit. It really feels like we've taken a journey out of work life, out of the concrete, and uh, into the greenery. The windows really make that possible. It's perfect. The rest of the stuff in here looks great. Does it come fully furnished? It does. It comes fully furnished, as is. Wow, on budget and with all the stuff that we need? Yeah. Feel pretty good about that. It is pretty good. Yeah, there's kind of a bar spot over here. A Little bit of built-in bookshelf, mm -hmm. but I would have to pare down a whole lot. Yeah, maybe we could make something work over against this wall here. You I could build in something that came like around the corner under the window. Like yeah. Okay. I wanted to show you an additional outside space. Oh, that could be good. This could be perfect for hobbies. Wow. This could be perfect for hobbies. Sounds good. Anna and Eric's tiny house search has been transformed by a modern incarnation of a treehouse. But sexy as the setting is, does it have all the space and conveniences that two working people need? It's a long rectangular space where you could barbecue, you can have people out here when you entertain. It's yeah. gorgeous out here. So with it right off the kitchen, leave that door open, it would really feel like an extension of the house straight out into nature. It's hardly a hobby room, though. I think we could make it work in the summer. It would be nice. This property is not totally like the cookie cutter stuff that's being built around Seattle. It's got a little bit of character, and being right here in nature, it's a, a great match.
Everything in there is like new and furnished and it comes in exactly on budget. You can't really do anything better than that. Jennings has shown Anna and Eric a tiny log cabin, a converted carriage house, and a modern home in the trees. It's time to decide. I, I don't know. I can't even like fit it all in my head like at once. Do you? I mean, do you have the chart? Yeah. Got everything written down, visualized. What do you think? I'm thinking we should probably just like get rid of one right off. And I'd see three of the five of our priorities on the cottage is just like frowning Frames. face. Frowns all the way down. House one is a 350 square foot stockade style log cabin. At $225,000, it's $25K under budget. But the kitchen is teeny and it has no space for hobbies. Yeah, cross it right off. So we're down to two houses. I really, really liked the Oasis. I especially liked that it was like right on budget. House three is 500 square feet and right on the money at $250,000. It's modern, tiny, and it's beautifully situated in nature. I mean, looking at this chart on the Oasis, I'm seeing four smiley faces versus just one frown. But I don't know, what would you pick? I'm kind of pulling for the abode, actually. House two is a roomier 620 square feet, but it's a budget buster at $300,000. It's got a flexible layout, but the master bedroom is beyond puny. The lake out the window is huge. We can see the mountains, floor to ceiling bookshelves. We've got that whole porch room. Can you just imagine, like, just walking out there and having your guitars ready? I don't know, $50,000? That's a lot of money. Like, are we even gonna be able to enjoy ourselves doing our, our woodworking or our music if we've like gone that far over our budget? And could you really find space for all the guitars you'd wanna spend that money on? You're talking about a retreat in nature, but also, you know, a retreat into things that we love and you can't put a price on that. You know, maybe we should focus a little bit less on the money and just kind of follow our hearts. Let's do the abode. Really? Yeah. Yes. Anna and Eric vow to eat ramen twice a week for eternity and buy the abode for $300,000. Moving day happens within six weeks. Two months later, the porch is jumping. I immediately walked out onto that porch and I felt super inspired. And it's been that way since we've lived here. I pick up a guitar and everything just feels so natural. It's kind of fun to be able to do our hobbies next to each other. He's kind of a third member of the family and has found a home as well. I've alphabetized my last name of author through L. She is very particular about the order and the location of the books. Can you try to see if it's possible not to break an author between shelves? I have no idea how it works. <laughs> I really like the way that we were able to use our stuff to kind of bring the color and the shape and the texture to the house. And the living space works fine if a few <laughs> friends and family stop by. I think there's more room for the books than there is for you. We won't have to move them ever again because we're going to live here forever. I feel like we have all the room that we need for all the stuff that we have. Really appreciate the fact that we don't have to like think about furnishing a giant house with stuff that we don't even want. But one of the most appealing features of the new house is actually a few blocks down the street. Because the nature is not right here, we kind of make it a point to go to the nature rather than, you know, taking it for granted. We do take walks down to the lake, so yeah, it's good. So what's cooking over there? Thinking fajitas? Does that work for you? That sounds pretty good. The kitchen is especially working really well for us. Are we still thinking about taking the uh, ferry up to Victoria this weekend? Yeah. Our house isn't a trophy. It's a starting point for adventures and a landing place when we get back. Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. Wow. Even though it's 260 square feet, it feels like spacious. If you've ever wanted to live the simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations, urban habitats. When buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. Food in one side, socks and underwear in the <laughs> other. That's tiny living. Are we going to kill each other? Are we going to kill each other? Time will tell. Tiny House Hunters Sarah and Andy have put down deep roots in San Francisco. 
nurturing home to free spirits, new technologies, Alcatraz, and alternative ideas of all kinds. They started out as housemates, but their relationship has gone up a notch. We were just really good friends. Do you want a cup of tea? Sure. And then we decided to, I guess you call it date, but then it wasn't exclusive. And so I made him pick. You have to pick. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I know one thing, our housemates weren't surprised when we got together. Yeah. <laughs> Life is good. They've traveled far and wide, and Andy's introduced Sarah to a whole outdoor world of hiking, biking, snowshoeing, and backpacking that she'd never known. I definitely can't wear my high heels. <laughs> so it's been nice. I get to see a different take on the world. I appreciate nature more. They're currently living in a sleek, modern, 1,200-square-foot rental. Did you, like, make it to the park, or what was going on today? And their only roommate is Rocky Bob. Oh, how is your day? Sarah works at a high-tech startup. So it's data visualization of analytics, and I'm the VP of marketing. Andy works from home doing freelance PR and providing nonprofit housing assistance. Michael's doing really good. We found him a home. At this point, they're ready to buy their first home together. Yeah, tired of paying rent. <laughs> and since San Francisco is one of the most expensive markets in the country, the idea of going tinies gained traction. There's just the two of us and a dog. We don't need a big space. What we do need is a backyard for the dog. I need a place to put my head, a kitchen to cook our food, and I will also need an area to work from. Andy and Sarah have pegged their budget at $600,000, and they think a well-designed 500-square-foot space could meet their needs. But there is one bone of contention. My definition of buying a house is a freestanding home, and he wants a condo. It's going to make our lives, in particular my life, quite a bit easier with a condo. They're lucky to have an experienced realtor and Sarah's extended family to guide the search. Sarah's my cousin. So I want her to get the best purchase. I understand Andy's concerns around maintenance, so I see why he's leaning towards a condo, but I'm kind of rooting for Sarah to win. Okay. Jen's first pick is in Bernal Heights, a residential district south of the city center. After the famous earthquake of 1906, this area was a hotbed of tiny home building activity, which provided lodging for displaced families. Some of these tiny homes still stand. So this little house is tucked right around here. Oh, wow. It's a little bit larger than what you're looking for at 600 square feet. That's fine by me. And a bit more over budget at 650. I don't like that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it if we're getting more space, though. Oh, wow. I love how it opens up. It makes this place seem social. What do you think? I uh. like it. I, I can see myself sitting here and entertaining. I don't particularly like how the television's placed, but they've done what they could do with it. I mean, there's a ton of windows. There's a ton of light. The ceilings are high. I like the hardwood floors. It's really charming, but with charm comes age, and it's about 100 years old, Andy. Right. It's also $50,000 over budget. I like the history. I just know with that is going to come a ton of problems and a ton of maintenance. On the upside, Andy finds an alcove with some office potential. I can put my computer here, papers up top. I feel like also because it is um, separate from the bed, so far away, we actually have that space we were looking for. Right. It's nice, especially since I work from home, that we can have separate spaces when we need it. This kitchen does not feel tiny. But it feels like I'm in a law office. It's like super masculine in the dark wood. I just am not a fan of walking into a man's kitchen. We're not going to have the money to put in any renovations, so. If we take this house, we take this kitchen at least for five years. This is something that I would have to live with, and it comes down to give and take. I would say 70% of your storage space is here in the kitchen. Well, we don't have that much kitchenware, so if we have to, food in one side, socks and underwear in the other. <laughs> Great. 
Wow. wow. This place is huge. It's all shower. Come on in, Jen. Get it. Family okay, that showers together stays yeah. together. When you're looking at a tiny house, how you use your space becomes incredibly important. Wow. This is a tiny bedroom. Sarah and Andy are trying to imagine life in a 100-year-old tiny home in San Francisco's Bernal Heights neighborhood. I mean, this is weird. How do you even see yourself in the morning? Well, you just kind of <laughs> get dressed <laughs> like that, right? Do you think you could ever dorm this place out? With what money? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I really like the space. I like the long deck. It's really nice. And here's a little area for Rocky Bob. And look. It looks like there's a hot tub. I know. The hot tub, I'm a huge fan of that. Not hot yet. <laughs> but I know it takes quite a bit of upkeep. So I love it. It's loud. That's the entrance over there to the highway. Right. That's all you can hear when you go outside is the cars. I think we had two things coming into this. We had our budget that we put in place, but we also had our wish list. And it's a matter of working out which ones we want to go for. Right off the bat, the price of it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It's $50,000 over budget. Yes, we get 100 more square feet, but at the same time with that, we're getting a house that's over 100 years old. Yeah, but it's tucked back. It's in a great neighborhood. i just not sure about the kitchen. Well, I've got my fingers crossed for the condo, so hopefully you can keep an open mind. I'm gonna keep an open mind, but we'll see. That condo is a few miles north in the famously rough around the edges Tenderloin District. This downtown area includes City Hall, a domed architectural classic that opened in 1915 to replace the original one that was leveled in the 1906 quake and fire. The Tenderloin also has the advantage of being relatively flat, unusual in San Francisco. The apartment Jen's showing them is in a 1908 landmark building that was gutted and converted 100 years later in 2008. It's fabulous. I think you could even walk to work from here. That's a plus. After you. Thank you. So the unit we're going to see is under budget at 450000 Oh, wow. But it's a little bit smaller. It's about 260 square feet. Wow. All 60 condos here are unique examples of tiny architectural design. Wow, I like the space. From what I can see, I love the design and I like what they've, you know, what they've done with it. It is definitely smaller than what we, uh, what we just saw. Yeah, the high ceilings make it feel bigger. Even though it's 260 square feet, it feels spacious to me. All I see everywhere we go, the chandelier, the walls, metal. Nothing can go wrong with metal. <laughs> I've always liked the idea of a condo, and I just know that the way it's built, it's going to last for years, and if anything goes wrong, it's not really going to be our problem. Stainless steel kitchen, this is good. Microwave and oven, stove tops. What have we got down here? The refrigerator. And I actually like the stainless steel sink. It's big enough. We can even wash the dog in here. <laughs> we can, actually. Which is what we have to do at home. <laughs> and look. Look at our table. <laughs> Dining room for one, <laughs> sure. I don't know. Look, you can take this plate, <laughs> and you can fit four people. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really a dining room table, but there is a place to sit down and eat. I like how they use this big couch, and there's lots of room for people to sit. Right. Big window, the TV, you can see everything. Everything feels proportionate. And here I have my own space to work from. We've got the bedroom up there, Sarah, so you can you can stay in bed. I'll be quietly doing my thing. You'll be sleeping. No. <laughs> and you'll just sleep the morning away. That's the chair sure. was an issue. That's an easy fix. There is a closet when you first come in. So this is nice. Where's the closet? <laughs> There's a little more sacrifice is going to be happening here. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I love the barn door. Very clean and modern. I like the subway tile. It's super nice. And it's got a good sink and a good toilet, so there's nothing that we'd have to change in here. That toilet work for you? It was little. It was cute. I could fit on it. <laughs> I have always wanted one of these. 
Could you imagine the dog climbing these stairs, though? No, but Rocky Bob is spoiled, so you can carry him. <laughs> I'm liking the brick. Where do I put my stuff? Sarah and Andy are taking a close look at a super sleek 260 square foot condo in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. We can get a captain's bed, put some more stuff under here. Maybe build some flat shelves or right. sit and kind of like maximize the space up here. Yeah. Are you ready to pull out your tool? Um, <laughs> it's tool your tools. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the extra money that we have in our pocket would allow us to build some extra storage. At the same time, we're really gonna have to downsize. Well, here is the roof deck. This really has that urban feel. Downtown feel, for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And it has this great entertaining space. I would love to come up here for a party, guys. I'm all of my crazy family <laughs> up here. <laughs> the present company excluded, right. of course. No, right. Of course. So we got a really good look at the unit, Andy. Why don't you tell me what you think? It's definitely smaller than what we were originally looking for, but because it's under budget, we have money to play with. We can get creative on storage. But, God, where do I put any of my stuff? Yeah, it's definitely small, but we did agree that we we're willing to downsize. This will put our words to the test. And it is way under budget, and it's right downtown. I'm a fan. Jen's next pick is in the heart of the one and only Castro District. The Castro is quintessential San Francisco. It was once a blue collar Finnish neighborhood, then an Irish stronghold, and in the 1960s became one of the first gay communities in the US. I love the Castro District. There's lots of things going on. There's awesome restaurants. With this house, Jen thinks she's found an ideal balance between cost and space. Well, this is it. Love the front. Your house is actually in the back, but we're going to go kind of around. OK. OK. It has a little bit of an unorthodox entry, but I think that's what makes it fun. This is like a hobbit hole. <laughs> it's in the back, and I think you guys are going to be really surprised and happy when you see it. Surprised? Definitely. <laughs> wow, this is otherworldly. It's all this outdoor space. It is shared. Once you get through the tunnel, this standalone vintage home oozes San Francisco warmth and charm. It's a single family house listed at 500,000. I like that. And it's about 450 square feet. Great. Wow. OK, so we got the bedroom here. I have never opened a door and seen a bed right there. I think I can make it work. There's a lot of natural light, skylight. It's almost like you're camping. <laughs> it's a little weird that there's this huge window right in front of the bed. Well, that's one way to get to know your neighbors. <laughs> I like that the bed is right next to the window, and it allows us to enjoy the beautiful space that this house is placed in. Uh, it doesn't bother me one bit. This is great closets for me. And we have a bunch of storage over here you can see where you can put your books and everything. This house is smaller than we're looking for, but I think it makes up for it with all the extra storage space. Ugh. I could see you guys sitting there entertaining. Watch a little football. Or I could watch my programs while you're in there cooking. I like to cook, but what I don't see is any workspace for me. We could try to convert some of that storage space in the bedroom into a workspace for you. Right. And then you would be on top of me, while I'm laying down in bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other area I don't think we should get into. <laughs> So we do have some eating space and a couple of chairs. But what I'm not seeing is any stove. There is an induction plate and a convection oven for a little bit under your budget. So if you wanted to put in a gas stove, that was a priority for you. We have 100000 to play with, so we could put in the gas stove here. Right. That yeah. makes sense. The kitchen holds a ton of stuff. Oh, wow. This is awesome. And you're actually standing on a trap door. Oh, wow. So you have more usable storage space here. This is actually what I want to see. This is where your camping stuff can go. Yeah, we can put some stuff down here. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. I like the trough-looking sink. Oh, this is super cool. You can hide all of my junk. <laughs> <laughs> all of my crap. All the girl stuff. Done. The bathroom's small. I was surprised that it wasn't an issue for you. What I want and what's realistic are sometimes two different things. 
let's go back outdoors, you guys. It's really, I think, wonderful and special. It's really got that uh, Garden of Eden feel to it. Sarah and Andy's interest is peaked in a tiny hidden gem in San Francisco's Castro District. It needs customizing, but it's got an outdoor space that their dog Rocky Bob would drool over. But it's shared, right? It is shared with the other two units. I don't know how Rocky Bob's gonna do with everyone else. Right, well, uh, he's an easygoing dog. They'll be able to put up with him. And he's a city dog. We're used to taking him out for walks. You can't find out who your neighbors are. It's like, you just have to like pray and hope that they're freaking cool. If you are spending all of this money and you are buying your neighbors with this house, and I just feel like I don't want to have that gamble of feeling disappointed when I come home. So you're saying it's a lot of money for a lottery? It is, yeah. yeah. This decision will not be easy. Jen has shown them two tiny vintage homes loaded with San Francisco charm and one ultra-modern condo in a converted landmark building. Let's weed it out to two and get rid of one, so. Let's get rid of the Castro home. I agree with you. Really? It didn't have a workspace. House three is 450 square feet and $500,000. It's a tiny vintage home in a very cool neighborhood, but it has some quirks. Honestly, going through that tunnel would kill me every day. So we're down to two. Which one do you want? I want to go with the freestanding home in Bernal Heights. It's got this great living room for having people over. House one is oversized at 600 square feet and over budget at $650,000. It does have a full kitchen and a private outdoor space with a hot tub, but it has limited closet space and its next door neighbor is a freeway. I want to go with the condo. It's under budget. House two is a tiny 260 square feet and a budget friendly $450,000. It's right downtown, has a shared rooftop deck, and should need much less maintenance. I can see why you like that place, but it is teeny tiny. I didn't even see anywhere to put my toothbrush. Well, think of all that money. We've got a lot to play with. You can't build it out anymore. I mean, it is what it is. OK, but what about the fact that a house that's over 100 years old, it's a little bit of a lottery? In 260 square feet, there's going to be a problem. There's no space. Aren't you going to have a problem with the kitchen at the Bernal home? No. I mean, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Well, are you going to be happy cooking from home every night? Because we're going to have $50,000 to make up. So are you saying what I think you're saying? I am open to the Bernal house. If you like it, I think we should do it. Hey. Sarah and Andy avoid a potential San Francisco bidding war by putting in a full price offer right away. Three months later, they're in. We love it. I feel like it was pretty move-in ready, and life has been good. I've been really pleased that there haven't been any issues. I was a little concerned the house is over 100 years old, but so far, so good. Andy's work nook gives him just enough space to be comfortable and organized. So hopefully the crowdfunding campaign is working for you. The kitchen is working out great. It's huge for Tiny. Cut that avocado for me, please. Sure thing. Sarah didn't discover one of her favorite features until the day they moved in. The shower. <laughs> it has amazing pressure, and it is the best shower I've ever been in. Rocky Bob, come on, little man. Come on, Come on, buddy. this is all for you. Within a few weeks, they've all gotten used to the white noise from the highway. San Francisco is super small, and to have your own private space is kind of unheard of. I did not expect to have a hot tub or late nights in the tub. If we were going to have a party, it's going to be us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Cheers. Cheers. When I was thinking about going tiny, I thought it was going to be really hard. I thought I was going to have to give up a lot of things, and I was worried about living on top of Sarah. And honestly, it's been a lot easier than I thought. <laughs> and just as they expected, the quirky world of Bernal Heights has become part of their extended living space. Let's toast to outgrowing the house and having to buy a bigger one. <laughs> Already? Spoken like a true realtor. I think you guys ended up in the right house. Sarah got what she wanted. <laughs> and Sarah should always get what she wanted. <laughs>
Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. This is definitely a big bathroom for a tiny place. Wow. If you've ever wanted to live the simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations, urban habitats, when buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. Here's a closet for you, Zeb. This is where you can hang your stuff. Oh, my God. That's tiny living. When you leave the deposit and we send you the contract, we leave the keys for you. Tiny House Hunters Virginia and Debbie are partners in business and in life. On the business side, they manage about 20 beach rental properties on Long Island, a few of which they own. It's girls coming in this weekend. Right. All girls weekend, bachelorette party. I think they're checking in at like 2 o'clock. The life side of their partnership is a longer story. Happy 14th yeah. birthday! Thank you. Debbie's a lifelong Islander and had a 30-year relationship with the father of her kids. And I have three beautiful children, so I got something really great out of that. Eventually, we divorced. Then I met Virginia. She opened me up to a whole new side of myself, absolutely. Virginia also had a previous marriage. I have one daughter who's going to be 14, and she is a handful. For my birthday, I want a Gucci bag. A Gucci bag? Yeah. <laughs> Keep dreaming. It's my birthday. <laughs> Virginia and Debbie have been together for almost 10 years. We have a great relationship with our exes. We share custody with all four children. And when we don't have the kids, we like to go to the beach and spend time together. Their house is a comfortable 2,400 square foot home in Farmingville. This is a quiet family suburb in the center of Long Island. There's plenty of room for the kids when they're home, and there's also space for running the business. Are you coming in on a Sunday to Sunday or a Monday to Monday? Debbie and Virginia have no plans to sell their main house, but when they have a few days to themselves, they want their own tiny hideaway. So Debbie and I would like to go and find our own little space on the beach where we could check ourselves in and not check yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. It's taken a while to hammer out what kind of tiny house they're looking for. I'm going to the beach. What am I going to have? Shorts, bathing suit, flip-flops? Doesn't have to have a closet. Doesn't have to have drawers. I could just live out of my suitcase. Just promise me, please, that it will have a working kitchen it's like therapy to be in a nice kitchen. I'll agree with that. This tiny house, it has to be plain Jane. Oh, Simple. Plain. We keep saying plain. That would be horrible. Well, here's to finding our own little tiny beach house and not killing each other, Dylan. I agree. Cheers. They already know a realtor in the area who knows the Long Island real estate market inside and out, and she's happy to start the hunt in the dead of winter. Long Island is fantastic. There are so many different areas. There are the beaches, there's great shopping, restaurants, the trees. It's very, very beautiful. Long Island is all about the water, and there are over 1,600 miles of coastline here to enjoy. The beaches in Long Island are so world-class, so beautiful, and they come at a massive premium. So if you want to be close to the beach, you better be able to pay for it. Debbie and Virginia think 300 square feet would be perfect, and they set a budget of $125,000. Lucy's first pick is in the ultra-chic town of Southampton. Welcome to the Hamptons. It's right on budget at 125,000. That's, that's good. It's only 200 square feet. I 200 will warn you, square I know feet. it's quite small. Something in the Hamptons in our price range, unbelievable. Wow, welcome, welcome. this is nice. There are wraparound windows, like so this that. is going to bring in a ton of light for you. Yeah. Small space, but I'll tell you, nice and bright and airy. Big couch. Why is there a bed in the living room? Well, the people that currently live here have been using it as a share situation. Yeah, yeah maybe we oh. could put a big dining room table in. That would be perfect. Well, that's a good idea. Having that bed off to the corner is not working for us. We don't need it. We're looking for a space for the two of us. So I think we can have a larger dining table, have some guests over if we wanted. What do you think about the rug? I'd rather have wood. I know. You can take the carpet up and put on hardwood floors. As you can see, this is not a huge space, so obviously the cost won't be as much as a great big house. I think the living room is bright and airy. I think it uses the space well. 
I had enough room to relax. I'm not there to furnish it. I'm not there to decorate it. I'm not there to paint it. I'm there just to enjoy myself with Debbie. So here we have the kitchen. The kitchen counter is very nice. I like it. It's really cute. I mean, I like the cabinetry, but there's no stove and no oven. I think you're just going to have to put one in. I mean, you have the room there. At least we have a nice size refrigerator. When I do cook, I need more space. I definitely would need an oven, stove. It would have to be replaced. Ooh, pretty big. Here we go. This is definitely a big bathroom for a tiny place. Wow, and a big window. Nice. Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Nice shower. I think this could work. This yeah. is very nice. I like the bathroom. It has a lot of room, and I have a lot of hair, and I need to blow dry it. <laughs> so we're now going to walk through to the bedroom. OK, sounds great. The bedroom. Come on, Virginia. We're going to take a quick look at the bedroom. For a small house, it's actually a pretty good size and holds a queen-size bed. Oh, it does, although it's mostly all bed. After 10 years together, Virginia and Debbie are looking for a tiny house near the Long Island beaches where they can go chill out. It's got storage. Oh, I like the windows. That's so cute on this side, right? Yeah, it's nice. At least, you know what it does? It brings in the light, which is good. But this doesn't seem quite the bedroom that you would like. I know. I do like the color, but no, this bedroom's a little small. It doesn't really have my style to it. A little boring. A little boring. Debbie thought that the bedroom was vanilla. All you do is you go out, you could buy some wallpaper, some paint, and you make it your own. I think the bedroom's fine. I think it'll do just perfect. De I don't know why Debbie's making such a big issue on the bedroom. When you wake up, we're out of bed and on our way. I'd love to know what you think about this property. I like that we're close to all the beaches. That's the main thing for me. And the bathroom is quite big for a small place, which makes me happy. That kitchen is not going to work for me. I'll have to remodel. I'll have to bring in a stove, and it's just more work than I wanted. Even if it does need some work, just knowing there's a tiny house somewhere near the beach is a relief. It's a very tiny space. I mean, it's on budget, which is good. But it's a little small, don't you think? But the bathroom was big. I mean, that was perfect. Do my hair in the mirror, no problem. You know you need a lot of room for that. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But listen, I know we don't want to have all kinds of space, not fill the place with people. It's for us. Right. Lucy's next house pick is 30 miles away in the hamlet of Wading River. This small town sits on Long Island Sound on the north shore of the island. Its sheltered waters make it serene and tranquil, but it's not for people who need the Hamptons' nightlife. This is right on budget at 125,000. Wow. It's okay. 300 square feet. Yay. And it's called the Beach Cottage. Wow. Wow, look at the water, Debbie. It's right here. Wow. Unbelievable. Welcome to Beach Cottage. As you can wow. see, open and airy. Yeah. I can totally see myself getting up in the morning and having coffee looking out to this view. Kidding me? Okay. I know. The beach could not be closer. You literally walk out of the house, and there you are, right on the sand. The water is almost in your house. Pretty special, hey, right? Look, this opens up. That's good. What kind of floors are these? They call them bleach blonde. Oh, bit very like good. you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to picture myself cooking a big meal right here. How would I do that? Like, it's just too close. I have just this little bit of counter space. So that concerns me a lot. I know that we decided to go tiny, absolutely, but this is a little too teeny tiny. I can't really picture myself being there that often, preparing meals. Now, although the appliances are new, it's just very small. Well, I think it's perfect. We can go out to eat, or we can barbecue. The kitchen area leads directly into the living room. Again, the high vaulted ceiling with a ceiling fan and lovely bright furniture. This wow. is nice. And look at the view from sitting here. It's like living art. There's some more storage here. That's good. That's where they keep the pots. So that would be perfect. They put this big couch, though, in this little space. There's no real full-size living room. I beg to differ. This is style. I totally see a surfboard up here. It's beautiful. This is definitely my style. Yes, it is. Well, you're a jeans and t-shirt girl, so definitely is your style. But I'd like a little bling. I mean, it's pretty simple for me. 
living room does feel a little boxy. I can't put another chair in if I had four people sitting here. Where am I going to put the chair? They'll have to sit in the kitchen. I think the living room is perfect, and it's cozy, and I think that she could just get rid of some of those storage cabinets if she wants another chair in there. Let's uh, take a look at the bathroom now, shall we? Wow, this is a large oh. bathroom. What a nice space. Look, it's got heating in here. Oh, so what's nice is it has the full-size tub. So when you're out and we're on the beach all day, we can come in and take a nice bath. And also, there is an outdoor shower as well. Oh, very nice. Good. The bathroom is perfect. Clean, white, crisp, tub, everything is in there. The bathroom was actually one of the biggest rooms in this little cottage. So this is the bedroom. We have a queen-size bed again and the lovely high ceilings. Debbie and Virginia are looking for a tiny getaway house in Wading River, Long Island. This place sits directly on the water, but at 300 square feet, there are some compromises. Very nice, but not for nothing. This bed takes up the whole room. I think it's missing half the wall. This is nice. What are you kidding me? You're on the TV and you're watching a game and, and I'm in here and I'm trying to relax and I'm trying to watch a little show. We're going to hear each other. Well, I won't watch TV inside. You got a deal. They always seem to end up arguing in the bedroom. Debbie felt like the bedroom was too small. Virginia, on the other hand, loves it. All she wants to do is have a place to hang her bikini and she's good to go. Here's a closet for you, Deb. This is where you can hang your stuff. Oh, my gosh. I don't need a closet. So ridiculous. You could have it. Well, that's a very small, made-up closet. The bedroom's very teeny tiny here. It has no closet whatsoever. It has a stick coming off the wall. The bedroom is perfect to go to just go to sleep, wake up, and get on the beach. Virginia loves the place. She loves the proximity to the beach. And I think this is exactly what she's looking for. I love to spend a day on the beach just like everyone else, but I certainly don't need to be directly on the beach. A short drive would be fine for me as well if I'm coming back to a place with more space. I really like it. I know you do. It was all about the beach again. But really, we're looking for the space. It has everything you need, pretty much, but it's all like one space. What's wrong with it being one space? I don't know. Look at the kitchen. Uh, Although everything's new, I know, but it had absolutely no counter space. Well, in the beginning, we said that you'd have to have a kitchen, I'd have to have the beach. But I'm sorry, I really like this place. On the way to the next house, Virginia and Debbie take a breather at a local restaurant. I can't believe it took eight years to finally get to this point. I'm going to enjoy it. Yes. I just hope we find the right place. Lucy's next tiny pick is just outside the town of East Patchogue, back on the south shore of the island. This is a larger town with more shops and restaurants than Wading River had to offer. Be very, very careful of the ice. It's a little bit slippery, but this is a lovely little cottage. It's called The Loft. It's actually 550 square feet. Ooh, that's oh, that's nice size. The bad news is that it comes in a little bit over your budget at 140,000. Oh, well, so as long as we get what we let's want. Let's take oh. a look. Look at this place. It's filled wow. with character. Oh, it sure is. Look at the vaulted high ceilings. That's great. Beautiful old reclaimed wood floors. Oh, oh that's nice. unique. I could totally see playing games here and hanging out, we could watch a movie. The kids and we'll all fit here. It's a good space. There is an additional space here oh, that well. you can use for your office setup. You could do a vacation rental business here. Yes, you could. Ah, you could put some shelves on the wall there. And if you can see, also, there's a wood-burning ah, fireplace. Nice and cozy. This would definitely work, especially with these two chairs. You could face the fireplace. This place is like lots of stuff going on. It's like uh, different trains going different ways. This place is very busy, absolutely, but it has a lot of character. It's not plain. I didn't expect to find a tiny place with a fireplace, and that's amazing. I can warm my buns. On your wish list, a wow. big kitchen. Wow, it really is a big kitchen. Oh, it's like a proper kitchen. It really it's is. It's got everything. The kitchen in this house is magnificent because it's really big for a small house. And in time, they can update it, put in new cabinets, but for the moment, at least they can enjoy a big kitchen with lots of windows. I love the way they put these floors in the light wood and the dark wood. Yeah. Very nice. What do you think about the table? At least there's a seating for four. Yeah. This height right here, 
I don't know how your son Jonathan's going to fit in this kitchen. I mean, it's a really low ceiling. I could totally see the whole family in the kitchen. There's plenty of room for it, except my son, who might be too tall for it. The walls in the kitchen, I feel, are very uh, outdated or candy cane style. The next room we're going to go to is the bathroom. Oh. There's just one bathroom, but it's actually a very good size. Wow, that's a very big one yes, bathroom. It is yes, big. it is. Got it even tall. has wow. a washer dryer. Oh, boy, it has a lot going on in this little bathroom. Yep. I would say big, but this area right here, <laughs> my butt fits. I don't know about yours. <laughs> it does have a large tub, though. That'll yeah, work. and it has some storage, which is good. I think the bathroom is a great space, absolutely. As long as there's washer and dryer in some part of the house, that's great. So let's head up to the loft bedroom. This sounds fabulous. This doesn't appeal to everyone, but it's something different. So let's head up to the loft bedroom. This sounds fabulous. As you can see now, this is open. So obviously, this doesn't appeal to everyone because if you're downstairs, you can hear what's going on upstairs. Right. But it's something different. Virginia and Debbie are in the middle of checking out a tiny getaway home in the shore town of East Patchogue, Long Island. And there's a lot to love here. And it does hold a queen-size bed with the vaulted ceilings again. I kind of like that it's open and airy. And behind cool. you, Virginia, you'll see there's a ton of storage on oh, both sides. Wow, so tons of storage, wow, yeah. that is great. I don't mind having a loft bedroom. You can fit a queen in there. And it's airy. It's not like you're feeling claustrophobic. There's two closets, so we'll definitely have a hers and hers closets. I just want to let you know that from here, yeah. unfortunately, the beaches are not as close as you'd like them to be. They're roughly about a 10-minute drive. Oh. OK, I know that's not ideal for you, but I want to get it out there because I know for you the beach is very important. I understand that the beach is 10 minutes away, but totally worth the drive when you have this to come back to and have the space to be able to just relax and enjoy your time. It's time for Virginia and Debbie to make a decision. Lucy has come through with three solid tiny choices. A charming cottage in Southampton, a shorefront beach cottage in Wading River, and a rustic country loft in East Patchogue. I have no idea which house that they're going to end up choosing. How they're going to come to a conclusion here could be a boxing ring as far as I can see. I know which one I would cross off the list. I bet you I picked the same one. Charming cottage. Definitely. House one is a 200 square foot cottage that's on budget at $125,000. It's in upscale Southampton, but the kitchen is an afterthought. Thank you. I'm glad we agreed on that. Which one did you like out of the beach cottage and the loft? I would definitely say I like the loft the best. I figured you'd say that. House three is a roomy 550 square feet and has a real kitchen with standard appliances. But it's 15K over budget at 140,000 and is a 10 minute drive to the beach. And I know it's over budget, but so worth it. There is so much more space. Well, for me, Debbie, I have to say the beach cottage. House two is 300 square feet and has direct waterfront on Long Island Sound. At $125,000, it's right on budget, but it lacks charm and has limited counter space. I love it. It's right there on the beach. I walk right out the door. I'm in the sand. I don't even like it. I just think it's so boring. I, there's nothing to it. It's just all about being on the beach. It has nothing to do with the interior of the place. Listen, it's plain. Boring, boring, no, boring. No, it really no. is boring. It's plain. It's simple. Okay. It doesn't even have a washer and dryer. So what? It's in budget. I don't know where you're bringing it. That's sense because you don't have anything to do with preparing meals and putting clothes away. You don't even care that it has no closets. Debbie, are you kidding me? The loft is 15000 over budget. And All worth right? it. The bedroom had storage. It had a real kitchen. It has a full living room. That beach cottage got everything we wanted. We wanted to be on the beach, want to be in budget. That came in at that price because that it's so tiny, teeny tiny. Well, I don't care what you say. I'm going to be the bitch on the beach with the budget, OK? Think about it. We work our butts off all the time. We work so hard. And we could be sitting on the beach, having a glass of wine together, relaxing, and have vacation time all the time. Please, if it matters that much to you, I think we should call Lucy and let her know. Only Baby. if you make me Ooh. really yummy lemon, lemon martinis. Honey, I'm going to make you more than martinis. <laughs> Virginia and Debbie drive a hard bargain and get the beach cottage for $118,000. They're moved in two months later, long before the summer season even starts.
now that we actually are living here and unpacked and settling in, feeling really good about our decision. It's a small place. You don't have to clean so much. You don't have to worry so much. You don't have to do so much. You just pick yourself up and walk out the door. It never gets old, even in the winter. You just walk right down the boardwalk and you're on the beach. No packing coolers. Come in, make yourself a drink, go out. It's good. It's going to get better and only better. And maybe I'll get a paddleboard, too. Yeah, well, maybe we'll get a little boat. What the hell? <laughs> So Debbie, this girl, she wants to book something for July weekend, and there's uh, 10 of them. It's a bachelorette party, of course. All right, give her a good deal. Virginia and Debbie are like just one. about ready to start That's sharing their great. getaway spot. The kids are probably going to come by next weekend. Which is good, because you know what I'm going to do? We are not going to cook that day. We're going to order lobster bakes. As long as you calm down. The best thing about living in this beach cottage is we're really getting to know each other. <laughs> well, it's a small space, but we better know each other. I can't find all the straight parts. You're not straight. That's why you're not finding straight parts. Did you take a look at that? I really look forward to spending time here. Many, many years. I think we're going to be here until we're like uh, maybe 100. Old and gray. Well, old. You're already gray. <laughs> Whether the goal is owning that first home or even a vacation getaway in a far-flung location, Hopeful homeowners everywhere are questioning how much living space they really need. And when building isn't an option, turning to the real estate market can make tiny homeowning dreams come true in a big way. Oh, fantastic. Look at that view. Three huge French doors with balconies. And each view is different. If you've ever wanted to live the simple life in a tiny space, you'll be amazed. Wilderness locations, urban habitats, when buying a property under 500 square feet, ingenuity rules and freedom follows. This is great. The skylights? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of skylights up here. That's tiny living. Are you weeding? Well, the garden takes a lot of work, Rob. You just can't help yourself, I just huh? can't help myself. <laughs> Keith, a social worker, and his partner Rob, a marketing consultant, rent a 1,000-square-foot apartment in San Francisco's Mission District, just 50 miles south of their beloved Sonoma County. We decided to move to San Francisco back in 2003. We had met in Washington, D.C. We went to wine country in November of that year and sat outside in T-shirts and drinking some nice wine. And we sort of said to each other, I think that we shouldn't live in the winter anymore. And so we left. What do you think our friends are going to think of us buying a second home? Oh, I think they're going to be really excited. So we came to San Francisco, and as often as we could, we were taking weekend trips up to Sonoma County. We thought, if at all possible someday, we'd love to live there. So smaller than most San Francisco apartments. Smaller, definitely smaller than where we live right now. But is there a hot tub, and is there music piped in everywhere? <laughs> we're hoping. We're hoping. Yeah. If we don't have a really big bed, at least we can have a hot tub. I started this idea of a tiny house because I like things that are efficient and organized, easy to keep clean, and I was very interested in what can be done with a very small space. We don't know what we're going to get with a tiny house. Just, Just get a like bigger bed. And we can all hide <laughs> yeah. Strolling Sonoma's vineyards and chillaxing with a glass of wine are the area's main draws. And back in town, the frontier buildings create a mid-19th century shopping experience. Redwood forests also attract globetrotting adventurers, and the rocky western coast enjoys a daily display of misty sunsets. I think of your taste as being clean, modern, even austere, while as I'm going to be a little bit more rough, a little bit more wild. I would love the idea like, of a house in the trees, like an Ewok village. I think Kimberly's going to have her work cut out for her, but I think she can do it. I think she's up for it. She's awesome. Hi, it's Kimberly. There's a fair amount of clients out there who want to go tiny. A lot of the reason is they don't want to worry about the maintenance. They just want to live, enjoy life on the outside and the hiking, enjoying the coast, and they don't really need a 3,000 square foot house. Although Rob and Keith's budget is $350,000, Sonoma's high demand market makes it seem as tiny as the 450 square foot space they want to buy. Welcome. Wow, look at this place. This is what I like to call the treehouse. Oh, 
Wow. Check this out. Oh my god, Keith, the trees come right through the deck. I feel like a squirrel tucked away up here. Where are you putting the nuts? <laughs> we'll have to check where the storage is. So it is over budget at 450000 Oh, that is significantly over budget, Kimberly. Yeah, but you do get a lot more with 550 square feet. And that oh. doesn't include this deck right here. And it's a big deck. I think the outdoor deck area is pretty outstanding. But as good as this deck is, this house is over budget, and that's hard to swallow. Keith, this place is really, really cool. It's a lot of wood. Right here, you have a full-size kitchen with all stainless steel appliances. Oh, look oh at my that full-size. Almost as tall as I am. Yes. Keith, look oh. at that. What is that? I think it's called a dishwasher. It That's is. what I've been for the past 13 years. I know, and now look, you can take a break from all your suffering. Yeah. We got a stove. Yeah. We can do a lot of cooking here. It's electric, and we both like gas stove. If I'm going to go way over budget, I want the appliances that I want. I want gas. I want all the things that I want. There's a fantastic view. Oh, look at that. Look at the light bathing down on all those trees. Wow. And if you look up, you have the naughty pine ceilings. The place is filled with natural light. It's wonderful. And what's great, too, you guys have a wood burning stove. OK. Love wood burning stove. Before That's fantastic. Before you give me that tone, Keith, the current <laughs> owners do keep the wood underneath so it stays nice and clean. She's on to you, Keith. Uh, I'm getting that, but I do prefer a gas stove. I think this house is a little understated. It sort of blends in, which is appealing to Robert. But I wanted something that stands out, something that screams Sonoma. Oh my god, Keith, it's a oh. spare bedroom. Wow. So completely separate area, perfect for guests. Yeah, the separation, but you pay for it. <laughs> when guests come, they can have their room, and that means we have our space, too. So it makes sense that it costs more than we were hoping to spend. Oh, now this is really nice. I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, cool. I love the mirror making the space feel so much bigger. I like the dark countertop. I like the stainless steel faucet. I really like that. Nice tile. Yeah, this is a surprisingly big bathroom for this place. Yeah, yeah. The bathroom does a really good job of taking advantage of every bit of space it's got. Oh, this is a narrow staircase. <laughs> It'll inspire a diet, maybe. <laughs> oh, this is a good amount of space. So this is loft living. This Sonoma County treehouse isn't short on rustic, knotty pine charm. The generous outdoor living space and vertical height make the inside's 550 square feet seem a lot bigger than it is. But same goes for the price tag. It's 100K over Rob and Keith's budget. This is great. The skylights? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of skylights up here. Look at these end tables on both sides. Yeah, so they're nice built-in storage. Yeah, this appears to be a closet, obviously. Wow, it's cavernous. Space-time continuum back there. <laughs> yeah. Love the loft bedroom. I love the way it overlooks the place and seemed really comfortable and just right. This is like a state park. It's beautiful. I can definitely see myself gardening here. I love it. I like the idea of taking a forested environment and sort of making it a wild kind of garden. I really love the treehouse. I love the style. I love the fact that it's amongst the trees, like sailing above the trees, almost like a sailboat. This is one Sonoma experience. It wasn't necessarily the one I had in mind. I was envisioning more vineyards, rolling hills, maybe a little view of the ocean. It's undeniable that this view is outstanding. It is clearly Sonoma County. I just don't know that it was my Sonoma County. Everything I could possibly list about that house I'm in love with. Visually striking, I just, you know, I got to point out that it's a tough pill to swallow to spend 100K over our budget just because we fell in love. Because you fell in love? Uh, fair enough, fair enough. I don't really know if we can justify the things that we saw there with that price. Well, I mean, I got a second kidney. I, and I, what am I doing with it? <laughs> <laughs> Before Rob starts giving parts away in order to buy the treehouse of his dreams, Kimberly wants to see how the guys react to an under-budget bargain. All right, welcome to the cottage. It's definitely a cottage. All right. It is 365 square feet. OK, so a little smaller, but that's good. But it is also under budget at 300,000. Nice, love it. OK. Oh. This is adorable. Oh, 
So this is your main living area with vaulted ceilings with the redwood emphasis. I love the different kinds of wood. Yeah, I really like that. Now right into your right, you have the living room with a great futon that does fold out to a bed. Oh, so main living area, but also room for guests. Yeah. And you can put your feet up. Yeah. You can, absolutely. <laughs> and what's under your feet is the coffee table that doubles as storage. Oh, perfect, excellent. Perfect, perfect. We'll perfect. need that. I think it's warm, comfortable, homey. It's kind of closer to what I was thinking might make a nice place. The kitchen has a great farm kitchen sink. I love these deep sinks. Where's the stove? There is There's no, no stove. stove. I guess since we're under budget, we could maybe redo this area. If we got a full-size refrigerator, put it here, maybe open shelving all the way across. And we could put the stove right here, you know? And then also remember that it's California. We're going to be able to cook outside, have a grill. And a big table, some lights strung up outside. I could see yeah. the California wine country living out there. Yeah. It's not like it's going to snow I or even rain anymore. That's true. Yeah. So that's about two or three steps yep. from the dining area. It is open living, but you do have a full-size bed. And there's room to get out on both sides. I really like the night stands next to bed with the lamps. The reading light at the end of the day is important to me. And this one's actually made of wine boxes, which does provide extra storage. Perfect use. Yeah. And I like that that wood from the ceiling comes down onto this wall. That's a nice feature. Yeah, I like wood. Yeah. What's nice, too, right next to the bed, you have a shelf. Mm -hmm. So again, perfect for storage. Yeah, I love that kind of farmhouse style. The place is presenting some challenges because if it comes to like family spending the night, they're on a futon that's three foot steps from the bed, they're walking past the bed to go to the bathroom, they're right on top of us. And you do have a closet right here mm, as well. Okay. Oh yeah, there's additional storage here. This with the coffee table would be more than enough for us. Yeah. I think it's a really nice space. I think it's cozy. I love the use of wood. I just think it's going to require a little bit of creativity to make this whole thing work. I know that I can be creative with the space, but when we're talking about 85 square feet less than our ideal, that's not a lot to work with. Creativity can only go so far. Oh, this is all right. Please, no obvious jokes about this. <laughs> Rob and Keith are after a tiny vacation home in California's sunny Sonoma County, and they're checking out a 365-square-foot hay barn that's been converted into a $300,000 cottage, and it's 50 k under budget. <laughs> I do like the tile in here. Yeah, I like the tile, too. I like this wood towel rack. You know, are you surprised to hear that? It's a towel rack. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a little bit of a different Sonoma County experience. You have the farm there, a lot of open space. You can really enjoy nature here. Yeah. Yeah, I can see a grill area, maybe an, a big table. I can see starting a garden out here. Oh, yeah. Definitely room for gardening. We could put a hammock. We could do a lot of things back here. Yeah, this was actually a preschool beforehand, so they left the swing set. I love the swing set, and I think we should keep it, Keith. You I do. I think every house that we have should have a swing set. It's a great yard. It has a lot of potential right now. It's a blank slate. Overall, I think the place is really charming. Love the fact that I could garden outside. I don't think that that kitchen has what we need right now, so we'd have to do some work in there. I really like the place's warmth. I like the wood. I thought it was charming as can be. What I would say, though, is everybody's right on top of each other. If his parents come to visit, for example, where are they going to go? Right three feet from our bed is where. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Is, and then am I turning up this way? What does uh, it say? Stop. These are not the best directions. The guys get lost on the way to house three, but losing your way around here is just another chance to take in Northern California's mountain country. Look at that view. Are you serious, girl? Ranging from hot and dry to cool and wet, the rugged terrain creates some 15 unique microclimates all within close proximity. Are these olive trees? These are all olive trees. Look at that. This is a whole other climate up here. Yeah. After the detour, Rob and Keith find their way to house three. Welcome to the tower. Wow. It's a concept home inspired by an Italian Renaissance era villa on the inside, but the exterior is sided with locally sourced galvanized sheet metal. It has a nice industrial sleek look. First impression is fantastic. And then right here, you have the great tile grand staircase. Love this entryway. How much is it? It's slightly over budget at 400000 Yeah, a little. 
but it is bigger at 500 square feet. Oh, wow. This is fantastic. Nice views. That's impressive. So this is the main living area. And what you'll see is the tall ceilings at 20 feet high. Which is great for two tall guys. It makes it feel a lot bigger in here. Absolutely. And the floors are heated. Wow. Oh, nice touch. And this was actually designed after an Italian villa. So these tiles are from Italy themselves. What if I'm like bowling with wine bottles and I drop the bowling ball on the floor and need to order more tile from Italy? That would suck. Do you see what I'm dealing with? Just so you know, the main bedroom is downstairs. So okay. if you're looking for any overnight accommodations, it's going to be right here. Mm, OK, what do you think could work here? Well, maybe a Murphy bed, like something that comes out of the wall and folds down. Or with the limited amount of space, maybe like a, a day bed that goes in this corner. And then we'll just get rid of these chairs. Yeah. The house feels bigger than it actually is. It's like an Italian villa in a tiny house, and so it's really my style. If I can picture myself sitting here while you cook me breakfast. Oh. Yeah, making some coffee. I mean, for the two of us, this works perfectly. I'm not sure that the table right there in the center of the dining room is the ideal place for it. This is the ultimate Sonoma County view. Oh, check that out. It's really beautiful. I love the wooden counter. Oh, and it's a gas stove. We really like gas. And then there's an oven. It's a little bit on the smaller side, but perfect for tiny living. Yeah, that could work. And then this is the refrigerator. Oh, yeah, that's really small. So we really couldn't fit a lot of white wine or beer into this refrigerator at all. Oh, or food. <laughs> or, or food, right, right. I mean, if you notice, there's three of us in this space, and we can actually fit, and this doesn't feel cramped or weird. There's so much counter space, maybe we could sleep somebody up here. <laughs> That's a good use of space, right? I love that the kitchen is right there where the people would be hanging out. So this is your great master bedroom. Oh, this is a good size. Each side of this 500-square-foot, two-story home has balconies that bring nature closer in. But it's 50K over Keith and Rob's budget. Okay, you have a small house, but a room that feels spacious. Oh, look at this. Three huge French doors with balconies. Do you think that we could fit a larger bed in here? We could, actually. There's enough room on both ends and down on this side that we could put a bigger bed in here. I'm sort of known for sneaking away from the party and going to bed, so that would be perfect to go downstairs and go to bed and let the party go on upstairs. I love that it's circular. I think that's sort of interesting. Also, you have your walk-in closet right here. Oh, my god. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of storage. I was wondering, because there's no storage upstairs, but this is plenty for us. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is beautiful. Oh, check out this shower. It's huge. I can stretch my arms out. Oh, it's like showering outside. Yeah, a shower with nature around it. That's a nice concept. I love it. Oh, and this tile, the curved wall, it's all great. The one problem with the bathroom is that for anybody to use it, I'm thinking of my mom, they all have to walk through the bedroom in order to get to the bathroom. And that will be awkward in all sorts of ways. Oh, Kimberly, this is stunning. It's an amazing view. And you can see the coast from here. That is fantastic. So now that you've seen the tower, what do you think? For me, the style inside and outside is really what I'm looking for. And this view, if I'm going to be out of San Francisco, this is what I want to see. I love the use of space. I think it feels like I have so much room, even though it's a tiny house. That's awesome. I don't like that the exterior is literally metal. It is industrial. It is the opposite of warm. And also the price point. Before we even walk in, we're seeing this metal box that is over our asking price. To facilitate the decision process, the guys hunkered down at a local winery. I think that the easiest thing to do is to make it a list of two. Do you think you could choose one to eliminate? I could. It would be the cottage. The 365-square-foot hay barn turned cottage is more budget-friendly at $300,000. That place is cute and charming, but it's just not for us. Say no more. The cottage is off the list. What would you pick? For me? It would be the tower. The tower. That house is impressive. The 500-square-foot industrial-slash-Italianate tower has a breathtaking view around every turn. I'd go with the treehouse. I loved that it was amongst the redwood forest. The woodsy 550-square-foot treehouse has Rob singing its praises, but it's 100K over budget. 
These are two amazing properties and they both have a lot to offer. And what it comes down to is $100,000 over our budget. We're already over budget with the tower. Budget's busted. Yeah, we've already gone there. Sometimes we'll go out to dinner and we'll see that expensive bottle of wine and we'll say, let's spend a little bit more on something we want. Mm -hmm. Let's do that with this house. We're both in love with the tree house. And I think that we've never spent more and said, crap, I wish we hadn't done that. We've always been psyched. We'll find the money somehow. Hmm. You think we can do it? I think that there wouldn't be a minute where we weren't thrilled with that decision, don't you think? That place has a lot to offer. I agree, I agree. So I'm sensing a little bit of enthusiasm, am I right? I think this squirrel is moving to a tree house. <laughs> oh my god, that's I amazing. Think, well. <laughs> this is, oh my god, Cheers. this is incredible. Maybe push it to Wednesday. That gives me a little bit more time up here. I think that this place is beyond what I ever imagined possible. And we spent more for it, but we cut back on some restaurants and some travel and, you know, the college fund for the kids. Get a nice fire going here. Having a retreat and escape has really benefited the relationship. When there's a lot going on in our lives, we come here and it's made us better and stronger. Did we get any crackers? Yes. Good. The place has allowed us to have our neighbors coming by, friends, family, whatever. What more can be said? It's great. I can do so much cooking here in the tiny house. Those grapes look huge in this house. <laughs> it's actually quite spacious. We're now on the recreation committee of the Neighborhood Association. And we brought up the idea of parties, going from one person's house to the next. I think living tiny has taught us, me, to refocus on the things that are important and sharing those things. I can see after three houses, nobody's going to make it to <laughs> The first time we came to Sonoma County, we said, God, can you imagine living here? And we've been coming for over a decade. And to own just a little piece of this is a dream come true. I can't believe that we have this place. It's incredible. We landed exactly where we were meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.